Privilege is a somewhat difficult film to wrap your head around, partly because it focuses on some complicated themes and gives them room to breathe, lets them develop naturally, and partly because it's a bit unfocused and overly cynical, doesn't quite come to any conclusions about anything. This is a movie that claims to be a comedy, but you might not know that just from watching it, at least for certain stretches of the film. That said, I would absolutely recommend the film Privilege, and I think just a couple of details about the plot might be enough to pique your interest. This film has kind of a documentary style, evoking something by the BBC, basically. It opens on the streets of Birmingham, uh, where a man is enjoying the UK's first ticker tape parade. The narrator explains that this is not some politician or dignitary, um, but a pop star. This film centers around Stephen Shorter, played by Paul Jones, who was a somewhat famous pop singer in the UK. He was in the band Manfred Mann, which is not the same as Manfred Mann's Earth Band, the band uh, that was famous for covering the song Blinded by the Light. Anyway, Stephen Shorter is a pop star. He's essentially positioned as the Beatles. It's probably a shrewd simplification of the film to have just one character uh, rather than four. This movie is from 1967, uh, when Beatlemania was still um, uh, a big deal. Just a minute into the film, we already have some pretty interesting ideas. Some little things. I mean, first of all, Birmingham, largely blue-collar city. Parade could be anywhere. Why is it there? Ticker tape parade, of course, is largely associated with the United States and America. So there's some international, a question of international pop stardom. And there's a similar questions when the Beatles toured in the United States um, for interest, for, for instance. Of course, the main thing is hysteria, Beatlemania. You watch old videos of the Beatles performing uh, in front of these young fans just screaming their lungs out, and it's weird. <laughs> there are some modern equivalents, but it's strange. It doesn't make a lot of sense. I think, for me, particularly before the internet, you know, this was a time when a star's image was potentially so cultivated. Not that the internet is necessarily authentic, but back in the day, fans would read about their idols, their heroes from magazines. They'd see snippets of them on television. It seems to me highly impersonal. And like the relationship, this hysteria, it, it leans on this relationship that is far, far from the way that a normal human uh, would relate with another normal human being. Uh, before long, we get to see part of Stephen Shorter's show. Apparently, it was inspired by some of his time in prison. Uh, you'll see it in a second that this, this is not just a simple story about uh, someone like the Beatles. The narrator is hyping us up about how violent the show is. The stage is full of police, and Shorter comes out wearing handcuffs and is put in a big cage where he sings about wanting to be set free. The music here, by the way, doesn't sound like the Beatles. It's more like Deep Purple or some early prog kind of band. One thing leads to another, and before long, there's a big riot on stage. This is the show. This is part of it. People run out onto the stage, and they're beaten uh, by the cops. They beat the cops. In the end, Stephen is dragged off, and the show ends. He recovers backstage. The narrator explains that the government is in, fi in, in favor of these performances because they focus violent energy in a controlled manner because they keep kids off the street, and they keep kids out of politics. We'll soon learn that Shorter is backed and controlled very closely by the British government. So, like I said, we start with some ideas about Beatlemania, but this uh, takes things a lot farther. The concert scene is interesting. I think it's probably a bit too long. It really reminds me of A Clockwork Orange for one reason or another. Some visual cues, but also some themes of authority, violence, media, and a bit of paranoia about the government. There's a lot of overlap between these films. Compared to some of the onstage spectacles that we've since seen, Stephen Shorter's antics are actually quite tame. He's no Alice Cooper, he's no Dillinger, escape plan. But it's still a relatively powerful scene. And Paul Jones throughout the movie is actually quite good. He might seem a bit pouty in certain places. I think it's kind of the point. Um, but here his performance is dynamic. He wins us over to some extent. We fixate on him, maybe the same way the audience does. There's, a, again, a lot of interesting ideas here. This film is to some extent rolling popular music of the time into a morality play. It seems to be making some kind of point about the counterculture as spectacle, suggesting that the kids who take so vehemently to uh, Shorter are in some ways um, falling short of something meaningful, that they're, they're latching onto something that's fake and contrived. It seems like in some ways it's pushing Beatlemania to the side. Or maybe what we're seeing is anxiety about um, that kind of fandom, that kind of shift in the culture. 
The film has a couple different didactic thrusts. One is certainly paranoia about the government, which is a bit of a farce. Of course, there is a real connection between the government, popular culture, nationalism, media, violence. But it's complicated, and a lot more subtle than this movie would suggest, certainly. The other main kind of thrust is, is really an indictment of popular culture. Popular culture, particularly in the 60s, is complicated. This is a very cynical movie, though, and it doesn't give us much of a story about any genuine subversive ideas, any real changes, any real shifts, any real generational conflicts, any empowerment, or simply the value of entertainment to the people who come to the shows. We don't really get any of that. And this kind of bitterness that underlies a lot of the film is another thing that reminds me a little bit of A Clockwork Orange. Um, the government is scheming, and the people fall for it. The fans seem to be sheep. This film has a slightly libertarian lean at times, an extension of skepticism over the government, you can probably see. Um, Shorter's first song is about freedom, and this is maybe setting up a motif of freedom that we'll see throughout the entire film. Of course, Shorter is very far from free. He's caught up in a, in a machine producing his image um, and his fame. At the same time, it's not clear that the film thinks that people deserve to be free. Like I said, the fans seem to be sheep. A deeply cynical movie. Now, cynicism isn't necessarily out of place in a comedy, in some sort of biting satire. Um, and in some ways, maybe the idea is just that this is a send-up of Beatles fans that do legitimately seem like sheep at times. Like I said, it's difficult to understand hysteria. Um, but this is one of the places where the movie seems to lose its focus a little bit. It doesn't really give us any insight into this kind of extreme fandom. Maybe there is some link between counterculture and the, skeptic the spectacle of punishment, rebellion, something like that. There are vague allusions to the importance of violence. There's some animalistic importance to violence. There's some connection to youth or something like that. But the movie is very vague um, here. It's far from clear why people would actually be interested in this performance or why Shorter would be so famous. Um, large parts of this movie are more far-fetched than incisive. There's a moment in the film when Nazis are invoked, which it, it really seems quite odd. Most of the time that people invoke the Nazi party in a modern political context, they're in the process of making an extremely weak and ahistorical metaphor. This is a comedy, obviously, so, you know, do we expect a ton of subtlety? I don't know. But like I said, it ends up being more far-fetched than incisive, I think, and I don't think that is the goal. Fortunately, the movie does move on a little bit and gives us some more interesting things to think about. Uh, once we leave the stage and the, the opening performance, we get a much more naturalistic style. Apparently, this movie was largely inspired by a documentary about Paul Anka, which used a bunch of handheld footage um, called Lonely Boy. This has a very similar raw feel that's really great, I think. And the acting here is surprisingly strong. Paul Jones does a great job, even if he's pouting <laughs> most of the time. We get a lot of intimate moments with Shorter, um, who is a, a bit left behind by all the crazy angles of his life. A lot of the film is kind of a mix between these downbeat moments and all the crazy moments, all the crazy angles, which is where the humor tends to come in. It's understated humor, dry, British. <laughs> Some parts of the film are quite funny, but it's a particular sensibility. And like I said, if somebody didn't tell you that this was a comedy, you might not realize it for quite a while. <laughs> seeing Shorter's personal struggles is one of the strongest parts of the film. Seeing how he is alienated, seeing how his company kind of rolls on without him. Seeing the merchandise that's created, seeing how his image is spread. Seeing his company do deals with the government. Steve comes off stage after this first concert exhausted, and he seems exhausted throughout the whole movie. He has a hard time engaging with much of anything in his life. This angle of the film is pretty compelling, and it's also enduring. Commercialization of art is perhaps more pernicious now than it ever has been, and modern celebrity seems likely marked by the same listlessness. Of course, Shorter is living in luxury. A question you might find yourself asking is, who is taking advantage of who here? Or possibly of whom? <laughs> who is exploiting who? Right? This seems like a crooked system, but who is really in control? Is anybody, or have we just found ourselves caught in this strange capitalist cycle where nobody's really that well off, where nobody's really that happy? There are politicians, a cadre of businessmen, publicists, promoters, and such. Shorter himself, the fans, all of whom are malicious in a way. The fans, even. How are they malicious? Well, you know, of course they have some genuine obsession, but, you know... Might they get swept away by the fervor of the crowd and end up, you know, trampling the pop star as he runs through or something like that? Perhaps. Um, Shorter tries to reckon with the circumstances from time to time. He tries to make sense of it all, but it just seems like it's a bit too much. It seems in the movie 
Like he's lived this life for quite a while. Like he's been trying to make sense of it and he's more or less given up. There's some characters that come into his orbit that try to talk to him about things that try to kind of contextualize his life with him. Um, and he doesn't seem interested. He seems like he's already tried to make sense of it and he hasn't been able to. I like this kind of uncertainty um, a lot in this movie. A few other miscellaneous notes. The word privilege has since kind of shifted meaning rather drastically. Uh, in this film, the title relates to something that happens towards the end of the movie. I won't go into what exactly. One of my favorite fil uh, moments in the film is when Shorter uh, films an Apple commercial. He stars in a, an Apple commercial. Not a com commercial for the company Apple, but for the National Apple Council. An ad for apples and why you should eat them. This could be an allusion to Apple Records. It's one of the funniest parts of the movie, one of the parts that seems most clearly to be comedy. Um, Shorter is very closely linked to the Beatles in this movie. It's worth noting that none of the music really sounds much like the Beatles. Like I said, the first song is kind of prog. The second song sounds almost exactly like the birds. Overall, this is a somewhat in uneven movie. You probably get the sense of that. It's definitely worth watching. It's interesting. It's unpredictable. In some ways, I think it's pretty ahead of its time. Um, and in some ways, I think it's pretty uh, uh, a capsule from a very specific time. It could be better like that. It could be better as a timepiece than as, a, as an incisive commentary. Although I do think that some ideas about celebrity and commercialism may still resonate, even if some of the other aspects, the governmental paranoia and things, to me seem a little bit hokey. Okay. I don't watch a lot of comedies. It's possible I'm not giving this film a fair shake. I like subtle movies. This is not a subtle movie. Um, this does touch on some interesting themes. It does put them out there. Not subtle. In some ways, it's also not that extreme. Like I said, Shorter's act would pale in comparison to things we've seen uh, since then. So there are notable ways in which this movie just doesn't quite get all the way uh, to being what it could be. Um, but nonetheless, it's got a lot of interesting moments, interesting images, unpredictable, certainly better than just an oddity. That's privilege um, with Paul Jones from 1967. Like I said, I, I would recommend checking it out.